Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number nine in our incredible new tutorial series where you are going to teach the robots who's boss. I'm going to need you to get out your gear, the most excellent Elegoo Smart Car version 3.0. If you don't have one yet, look down in the description. There's a link over to Amazon. You can pick one up and play along at home. Also, I will need you to pour yourself a nice strong mug of iced coffee. That is strong black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. Hey, and as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It's your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. If you guys are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to learn today. I do believe where I left you off in lesson number eight was we had calibrated this bad boy where we could just say two things to it. How fast do we want it to go and how far do we want it to go and it would drive that distance at that speed. And we did the calibration using some math and so it worked really well. And you know guys, probably as important as the robotics you're learning is you're learning why math matters, why math is important, how math is your friend, and how math helps you solve problems that otherwise you would not be able to solve. And so what your assignment was for today, your assignment for today was to go in and let's see, get a nice view here. Yeah, was to go in and and the thing is is that we kind of broke we kind of broke our code when we started allowing you to change the speed because when you change the speed now all of a sudden that calibration on turning doesn't work anymore because you know you might be at a different speed and if you're at a different speed then you're not going to rotate the amount that you want so what your homework for today was your homework was to go in and kind of fix your left turn and right turn functions where whatever input you pass it it would turn that amount you guys leave me a comment down below were you successful in doing that were you able to figure out a method of doing that and I will say probably probably the easiest way to do that would be just with trial and error to like just set a motor speed and then see what the right delay time is to get like a 90 degree turn and then just kind of write a simple little equation where it would normalize it to that uh, to that value. But what I'm going to show you today is <clears throat> I'm going to and that might work that might work I'm not going to poo poo but that but I'm going to show you a little better way because what if it's not linear, right? What if it's not linear? Or what if there's not a zero Y intercept? It's not gonna just be proportional. So there's all types of different things that could be happening. Also, what might be happening is, what if you just kind of get a bad measurement and then that fitting pr uh, parameter, that proportionality constant isn't exactly right, then it's always gonna be off. So I'm gonna teach you how to think like an engineer. And the way an engineer would look at this is he would never go out and just make one measurement. He would do a linear regression. And that's what we're gonna learn today. We're gonna learn how to calibrate this thing better using linear regression. Don't be frightened. Linear just means line. And by this time, you guys ought to be good at a line because I did it like how many umpteen million times in our first Arduino tutorial series. And I've done it a couple of times in this series. So if you don't learn anything else from me, if you learn how to do a line, our time together will not have been wasted. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the strategy that we are going to take here. And I think to do that, we need to talk a little bit about... Uh, we need to talk a little bit about how to measure angles just to make sure that you understand what angles are because if you guys don't understand that none of this lesson is gonna is gonna make sense and I probably should have gone over that a little bit earlier but the way to understand what we're doing is I want you to imagine that you have a vector well what is a vector we'll think of it as a pencil a pencil that starts here at the origin and then it comes out and it is, let's just say, one unit long. Okay, so I want you to imagine that that is a pencil 
I can't quite put my pencil all the way up there, but that's a pencil sitting there. Now what I want you to see is, is that you can rotate that pencil. And if you rotate it up to here, its tail stays at the origin, but now its tip is up here. Okay, and you have rotated it. Typically, we use the symbol theta. You have rotated it 90 degrees. Okay, how about if you go all the way around, you end up back where you started, and that would be a rotation of how much? That would be a rotation of 360 degrees. Okay, well, if all the way around is 360, then what would halfway around be if we come over here? That would be 180 degrees, right? And so you kind of see the pattern that if this is 0 and then this is 90 and this is 180, and then this is, this is a way to kind of think about it. Count in 90. So this is 90 times 1. 90 times 2 is 180. 90 times 3 is 270, like that. Okay, 270. And so the big ones are kind of easy. And then, you know, usually on these calibrations, to me, it's more important to do linear regression and it's more important to have a good strategy. I can eyeball the angles really accurately because you know, imagine that you're coming like this. That is about halfway. That is about halfway between 0 and 90. That would be 45. And then kind of half of that again would be about 22. And then up here would be about 67. And so you can usually eyeball it. And like if, if you ended up out here, you would know, let me see, that didn't, that's not drawing very well, is it? Let me make sure you can see it. Here you would know that you're between 90 and 180, and it looks like you're halfway between 90 and 180, so that would be 90, and then that would be plus 45, and so that would be 135. So what you're going to notice is when I look down and try to calibrate this car, I kind of have a grid that is made by the floor tiles. And so I know that it's between 90 and 180, and I see that it's about a halfway. I'll call it 45. 45 plus 90 is 135. So you can kind of eyeball these things. All right, so that's that part of it. Now, what we really are the most concerned about is, is that in calibrating this thing, we want to make a good 90 degree turn because if I'm going this way, I want to turn 90 degrees. Well, there's one strategy that you could have used was just sit and adjust the delay time until you get one that works for 90, but we want to do a little bit more engineering than that. And so kind of what my strategy is going to be is my strategy is going to be to come in and use, it is really hard with this tablet to draw straight lines. It is really hard to draw straight lines because I'm just looking, I'll show you what makes it hard just so you kind of understand what I'm up against. You see, I'm drawing on this tablet and there's no lines and everything, so I'm drawing on the tablet as I'm looking at the screen. It's kind of tricky. It is kind of tricky. Okay, so we're going to come back over here. And so what I am going to do is I am going to just look at different times down here. And they're not crazy times. They're times that are kind of relevant. And so I'll look at like a half second and then one second and then 1.5 and 2 and 2.8 five and then three and then I'll look and then I will look at what rotation that I get from that and then I will see that this is going to probably make a line and then what we will do is we will fit an equation to that line and then we will have something like theta is equal to omega t plus some 
offset. Okay, maybe there's an offset, maybe there isn't. Well, this is just like y equal mx plus b. And so you see, that's just using a line. Only we are going to use, I'm using red way too much. Only instead of y, we're going to use theta, the angle that we have rotated. Okay, and we're going to use omega, which is our rotational velocity. That's like slope. That's like our rate. And then there might be a little bit of an offset in here. So does that make sense? I think that will give us a much, much better calibration. That will give us a much, much better calibration parameter or calibration algorithm. Okay. Now, I need you guys to call up a spreadsheet. If you don't have a spreadsheet, just make a table. But, man, if you've got a Raspberry Pi that has a spreadsheet, if you have a laptop, if you have any computer at all, you should have a spreadsheet. So I will be calling up Microsoft Excel. But whatever you use, it should be very similar to this. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say we are going to look at times. And we're going to look at times of... 0.5 seconds, 1 second, 1.5, 1 1 we're going to look at 2, 2.5, we're going to look at 3, okay, ah, not 4, you silly spreadsheet, okay, that was 3, and then what I'll put up here, just, ah, I'll put up here, is in seconds just so I keep track of my units. Let me make that a little bigger. And then this is going to be theta, our angle in degrees. Okay. You guys okay with that? All right. Now we need to go ahead and we need to call up our Arduino IDE. And we will start with a fresh new, a fresh new. Let me change the view here now. How does that work? That looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to change the view here. And what we want to do is we want to get the code that we left off with in lesson number eight. So go ahead over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com using the happy little search icon. Search on robotics training lesson number eight. You'll come to this lesson and you will have the code that we ended up with last week. Just making sure that we all start at the same spot. We will get the most excellent website out of the way. We will come over here, control A to select everything, control V to po uh, paste over it. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with this function calibrate right, because if we calibrate the right, the left probably should work. We'll, we'll check it, but it probably should work. Now, one of the things, we, we need to first of all adjust this a little bit, because remember, when we wrote this, we were always running at the same speed. Enable A, enable B were set at high, which means everything was running at full speed. But now, we might have sent a command to go forward at a lower speed. N, A, N, B are not at full speed. So this guy needs to know where, uh, <clears throat> he needs to know where we were. So we need to pass it. I'm trying to think. We will just call it, we will pass it int and write value, right? Because write value is that value up in the main program that we're passing down here, right? And if you remember up here at the top, we were, <clears throat> uh, let's see, we were setting a desired velocity, okay? And then we were calculating the write value that we would need to write to the enable A and enable B pins in order to get the velocity that we wanted. Well, now we need to tell Cal right and Cal left what we are operating at. So now, when we come down here to the void loop, which we were in, Okay, you see like we could set the speed and go forward and so forth. Well, well, we're just going to kind of comment out all this stuff. We'll leave it there because we might want to test it later, but let's comment that out. And so that's under edit. And then we will say comment, uncomment. So that code goes away, but we can use it later if we want it. And now what we're just going to do is we are going to call cal write. 
and we're going to pass it the right value that we use that that we're using okay just so that that function knows what we are using I hope that makes sense okay I hope that makes sense and I am looking for something up here okay now we are going to come down and we're going to work on that calibration function and then we'll work on the other one as well so let's do them both at the same time so cal right and cal left both need to know what the right uh, what the right value is now since this thing is running at who knows what right value we are going to set a right value and we're not going to use the one that's passed down but the reason we pass it down is we want to put things back the way they were before you came down here so if you come down here and we change things we're going to put it back the way it was and we are going to change things and what we are going to do is we are going to do an analog right and we're going to look at enable a and then we're going to set a speed and I'm going to do 125 because I think we could be a little more accurate if we're not turning at full speed because if we're turning at full speed there's a greater chance that those wheels are going to slip at the acceleration up or the acceleration down I'm feeling like if I'll turn a little bit slower that I might be able to get a little bit more accuracy in my turn so I'm going to turn at 125 so I'm going to say enable a at 125 I'm going to say analog right and I'm going to enable B at 125 now let's think how is it that this function knows what enable a is and enable B is but it doesn't know what right value is well enable a and enable B we define up here so they are global variables uh, but let's do this just for good measure let's cut this and then let's put that down let's declare that down in our void loop okay and when we declare a variable inside of a loop or inside of a clause between these uh, curly brackets when we do that then this becomes a local variable now that function would not know what WV is and so therefore we need to pass it WV so it will know what it is it's kind of like in this call I'm throwing it and then down in the function I'm catching it and so this is just to show you a little bit about how to pass uh, how to pass variables so now we're going to pass that down there okay and then that looks good we're going to calibrate right and then let's make sure that we finish we uh, fix the cal uh, left as as well so cal right we put these things in or let me just do this one and then we'll fix it one of the things I want to do is before we do anything I want to stop the car okay and why do I want to stop it I want to give it a chance to stop so I'm not like trying to do a calibration in the middle of something else okay so I want to just make sure that the car is stopped so I'm going to do a stop car and then when I'm done down here I'm going to do a stop car so I will stop the car when I come into this function I'll stop the car when I leave just to uh, just to make sure and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go back and set things back the way that they were and so I'm going to do analog right I'm going to do ENA and I'm going to go back to right value and therefore when you come out of this function nothing has been changed does that make sense ENB and then write value so I'm not going to mess anything up if I end up doing a calibration in the middle of something else it leaves the same way it came in I start by stopping it and then I end by stopping it and then you can go back and do whatever you want and so let's uh, let's get these here and move them down to left to make sure that we're being good and not forgetting things and that was before the stop car like that and then we need to come in and we had these uh, enable A and enable B commands in the calibrate left and we're going to come down and put that in our calibrate right okay so now what we want to do is we want to come in and we're going to start at what did we say we were going to start at we're going to calibrate right and we're going to start at half a second half a second would be 500 milliseconds because there's a thousand seconds in a second half a second would be 500 and so now we are going to 
hopefully find a good USB cable that's plugged in. We're going to come over here, plug it in. We get the happy little ding dong. And now we are going to download the program. Did that download that quick? Is it happy? That looks happy. Okay, we're going to come over to our spreadsheet. And then I think I'm going to try to show you on the floor what is going on. Let's see how that would work if I can give you a view of what's going on on the floor. What if I put it here? I think that will show. I need to get this paper out of the way. Okay, I'll try to kind of get you lined up with it a little bit. Okay, so I am going to put it on the floor. And notice when I put it on the floor, I'm lining the tires up. I'm lining the tires up along that grid uh, that the tiles make so that I'm really starting exactly at nose forward here. Nose forward, I'm calling that zero degrees, okay? And now I'm going to turn it on. And that really is straight. I'm going to turn it on. Whoa, 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 whoa. We had a jailbreak. What happened there? We had a jailbreak. Did I forget to comment out that other code down there? Somewhere we had something crazy going on. Okay, we did a, we broke that somehow. We did a stop car, so everything should have stopped right there. So then let's come up here and look at our void loop. Ah, ah, we left a backwards in there. Did you guys see that? And that thing tried to run off on us. Okay, we will, hopefully you didn't make that mistake. Hopefully you didn't run over your foot. Luckily these are small cars, right? Okay, so let's download that. What is this that it does not like? It's like it didn't see the serial port. Let's try it again. There, it looks happy. Okay, that looks good. Okay. So now we will unplug. We will come down here and line up perfectly carefully, perfectly carefully. And I will turn it on. And for half a second, that went, okay, you see that it's halfway between 0 and 90. Okay, it's about halfway between 0 and 90. But really, uh, let's see, 15, 30, 45, it is past halfway. And so if I look at this, I'm going to call it 60 degrees. Now, don't just write down 60 because yours might be different, right? You need to write down what yours is. But I'm going to write down 60 for mine because I can eyeball a 60-degree angle. If you guys aren't comfortable with that, use a protractor, right? Come up with a way, but you got to measure this as accurately as you can. And I have a good eye for angles. All right, so we did the half. The next one that we want to do is one second. So let's do that. We plug it back in. We This will go fast now, right? We'll come back down here, and we're going to the right. And one second would be 1,000. We'll close that off. We will, man, it's like sometimes it doesn't like that. Maybe it takes a second for it to see it. It's happy this time. I'm not sure why I'm getting that orange on the download. Maybe I need to give it a second. Okay, that looks good. We're going to come down. We're going to line it up perfectly. Okay, and we're going to turn it on. Okay. Now that went 90, and guys, this one really, uh, this one looks like about 45 degrees past 90. If I'm really looking at this accurately, that looks like 45 degrees past 90. 
I'm just going to kind of think about this a little bit. That's like 45 past 90. And so that would be 90 plus 45 is going to be 135. So we're going to come over here and we are going to call this 135. All right. And now we are going to come back. The next one it wants is one and a half. Okay. And so that would be 1,500. Okay, and now we will download it. Hope it likes it. This, ah, it's like the first time it doesn't like the serial port. But the second time is a charm. Okay, that looks good. So for one and a half seconds, let's see what we get. Okay, so that is uh, 180, and that looks like it is about 15 degrees plat pl past 180. 15 degrees past 180, that would be 195 is what we're going to call that. 195, okay. Now, the next one that we want is 2 seconds. So we're going to come over here, and that will be 2,000, okay? And now we are going to plug it in. Do you think it's going to give me that ugly orange again or the happy little green bar? I hope we get the happy little green bar. Nope. we got to click twice. I don't know. I need to reboot my computer, but I don't want to reboot my computer in the middle of this lesson. Whoa! Now it's really not liking this. Let me make sure this is plugged in good. We will try, try this again. Let me look. Huh. It's like it's not seeing the ports here. And now it has like a bunch of COM 11s. Do you guys see that? This is when you're really in need of rebooting. But let me just see if I can kind of power my way through this. That one's going to work. Okay. We will come down here. Get it lined up perfectly. Turn it on. Okay, so that went just absolutely dead straight with 270. Okay, that was just absolutely dead straight with 270. And so this one is 270. Okay, and now we're going to go to 2.5, 2,500. And we are going to put it in here. We are going to turn it off. We're going to hope for the best with our 17 port 11s. That can't be good to have that many port 11s on there. You should only have one port 11. Okay, we are going to line up perfectly. We are going to turn it on. Okay, and this is, I am going to say, it is 30 degrees shy of 360. It is 30 degrees shy of 360. And 30 degrees shy of 360 would be 330, like that. Okay. And now we got one more to do. And we will come over here. And we are going to do 3,000, which will be three seconds. We're going to do that. Uh, 
Okay. So that looked happy. We're going to unplug it. Come down here. This will be this will be our last one. We'll see what happens. Okay, that's that went all the way around, and that is just uh, fifteen thirty. That is really forty-five degrees past three sixty. Forty-five degrees past three sixty. Forty-five past three sixty would be four oh five. I almost grabbed my calculator. I almost grabbed my calculator on that one. Okay, so let me get this back up here, and let's now move this back up like this. Move this here, and let's see. So. In Microsoft Excel, you can plot this by hand if you want, but if you have Microsoft Excel, you can select it, and then you come in and you say insert. You want to insert a scatter plot, okay? You want to insert a scatter plot. You see it's how it says insert scatter? It's the little uh, axis with the dots on it. You don't want to insert anything else but a scatter. Okay, and then I'm going to get the ones here, the dots that don't have the lines, and then I'm going to do it like that. All right, now what's the kind of neat thing here is, the neat thing is this data is very, very linear, and that's good. The data is linear, and so that is really good. But what I want to know is I want to know the equation of that line. Well, if we do it by hand, if I selected this dot and this dot, I would get a different slope than I if I selected this dot and this dot or this dot and this dot. And so what I want is I want the line of best fit. That is called linear regression. Now back in the day you would do line of best fit by hand but now it's perfectly okay to let the computer do it. So I'm going to point at a I'm going to point at a data point. I'm going to right mouse click right mouse click and I'm going to say add trend line. Do you see that? Add trend line. Okay. And then I need to go back over here to full screen so you can see this. Okay. And then what I want is I want a linear trend line. I'm going to get further out of your way. Further out of your way. You want the linear trend line and make sure you say display equation on chart. You see that? You want to click you want to click that tick mark. You want to tick that display equation on chart. And then you want to come over here and look. And I wonder if I can make this bigger. Uh, I'm, I just moved it over. I didn't make it bigger. Okay, so what I want you to see if I can make this bigger. And my computer is not doing me well today. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. It's like Excel. I opened this thing up and it really slowed me down. So I got a little bit too much stuff going on here. Okay, so we want to edit text. This is quite annoying. Hey, did you guys know today? Did you guys know today is my birthday? Uh huh. June seventeenth. Yep. I am having a birthday today. And what do I do on my birthday? I come in and make videos because I have lots of fun making videos. <coughs> what? <coughs> what I'm hoping I can do is make this bigger so you can see it. Okay, there we go. All right, this is very important. This is the equation of the line. It is, I'm going to write it down here, y is equal to 136.29 minus 6. Okay, 139 or 136 
136.29 times x minus 6. So one thing interesting, notice that we don't have a 0 y-intercept. And so what that's telling us is if you're just saying, I'm going to go all the way around the circle once and then take that time and then just do it proportionally, it's not going to work because this doesn't have a zero y-intercept. And what does that mean? It means it's got to go for a certain amount of time before it starts moving. And so at zero seconds, it's like minus six because it takes a little time for it to just start moving. And so this is really important. This is why we want to do linear regression. It's going to allow us to get a more accurate reading. It is going to allow us to get a more accurate reading. And so let's see, we are plotting time down here and angle up here and this minus six would indicate that we would have kind of like a bias error of six degrees if we had not done this. Okay, so let's come back over here and let me see if I can erase some of this stuff come back up here a little larger. Okay, so I will get the pen here and erase it with a little luck so we'll have a little bit more room to work with. Okay, so we should be done with our calibration now as far as the experiments. Okay, so what did we end up with? What did we end up with? Okay, we ended up with y was equal to 136.29, 136.29. Minus six. Okay, now that is like saying what was our y value? What was our y value? I just want to make sure that I'm doing this right. Our y value is angle as a function of time. And now I'm going to close this because it's just slowing me down. Its angle is y. Okay, so what this is like is we're going to put it in our units now because our units were our angle is equal to 136.29 times the time, I didn't put my x up there, times the time minus 6. Okay, so if I plug in a time, I'll get an angle. But is that what we want to guess times until we get the angle we want? No. What do we want to do? We want to tell it the angle that we want and have it tell us the time that it would take to do that. So that means now we need to rearrange the equation. So what we would do is we want to get time by itself. We want to isolate time. Well, what's the first thing you want to get rid of is the negative 6. So how do you do that? You add 6 to both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So theta plus 6 is equal to 136.29 minus 6. I added 6 over here, so I need to add 6 over here. Now those make 0, so now I have theta plus 6 is equal to, uh, and I didn't put my t there, I'm not being a good boy, okay? So theta plus 6 is 130. 6.29 times t. Now what do I want to get by itself? I want to get t by itself. I can't subtract out the 136.29. How do I get rid of it? I divide both sides by that. Okay, so I'm going to have theta plus 6. I'm going to use parentheses and remember when we divide we use a horizontal line over 136.29 is equal to 136.29. I divided this side by 136.29, so I have to divide this side by 136.29, okay, times t, right? And the 136.29s cancel, right? No! No, there's no such thing as canceling. 136 over 136 makes 1. And then when we write it again, we don't have to write the 1. And we can move things to the other side of the equal sign. So the time is equal to 
theta plus 6 divided by 136.29. Okay, guys, do you understand how important this is? What is it that you care about? What is it that you care about? You want to get to a desired angle. Okay, now you plug in the desired angle that you want and then you calculate the time that you need to leave those motors on to get to the angle you want. You see, we're taking the trial and error out of it and we're making it something that is mathematically based. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to put this equation, we want to put, uh, we want to put this equation over into Arduino in our turn subroutines and our turn functions, okay? And I'm going to jot it down here. Okay, and now I will call up the Arduino IDE. And now what we want to do is, with a little luck, Okay, what we want to do here is now, we're not going to be doing calibration anymore, but what we are going to be doing is we are going to be doing right turn and left turn. Okay, and just like we did on the calibration, I think I call it turn right and turn left. I want to not just pass it degrees, I want to pass it right value. Okay, why? Because we're going to mess with enable A and enable B and we want to put it back. And to put it back, we need to know what it was when it was passed to us. All right. And then uh, let me uh, make an adjustment here. So what we got to make sure is, is that we're putting everything back the way it was. Okay, we got to make sure that we put everything back the way it was. So we're going to start by passing it the right value. That's good. And then we're going to declare our variable t. That's good. And since this thing might be driving, I might be going straight and then say turn right. Well, before I turn right, I'm going to tell it to stop. And so I'm going to always start by stopping the car. Right, we've already defined that, so it should know what that is. So I'm going to stop the car, and now I'm going to delay for a tenth of a second. Why am I going to do that? Just so that, like, just to make sure the car is still before I turn, because it's hard enough to make an accurate turn. So I always want to start with it being still. Then remember that we said that we'll get more accurate turns if we're not going so fast. So then I'm going to set it to analog right. And what am I going to write? Enable A. And what am I going to write it to? 125. Why 125? Because that is the speed that we did the calibration at, right? If I do the look down here, I did those turn calibrations at 125. If I did the turn calibrations at 125, I better turn at the speed that I calibrated at. I hope that makes sense. Okay. And now we are going to do an analog write. And we're going to do an able B and we're going to do a 120, 125 like that. OK, and I said a Danalog right. No, not a Danalog right. That would be something we need to come up with a Danalog right function. Analog right. And so we're going to write those two things. That looks good. Then high, low, high, low will create a right turn. Now, here is where the magic happens. We need to do a better formula here. And notice, guys, we are not going to, uh, we're, we're going to leave this times 1,000 because, right, we worked in seconds and Arduino does milliseconds, so I need to multiply by 1,000. But what was our equation? Well, it was the degrees that we, uh, that we want. You know, the theta was degrees, so we'll call it degrees plus 6 and then divided by 1, 3, 6. 0.29 like that and then times 1000 and then we are going to delay by t and now i think these things we can move over to calibrate left because it should be the same so we're going to copy 
and then we're going to come down to calibrate left and we are going to put this here like that okay and then we need to put these two things down here what did I get let's see uh, right here I believe okay so we're gonna set the speeds here in the left turn as well now there's one other thing we need to do before we leave we need to clean things up and that is we need to set these back to what they were before they came down because otherwise if you went back and you started driving you would be at the wrong speed so we're gonna come back here and we are going to at the end of our turn right function we are going to set this back to right value and right value and that way nothing has changed we leave it the same way we found it and I will do that for turn left as well so we stop the car and we put this in okay guys this is kind of scary it's kind of scary when you're doing this much math live and then you're going to go in and run it and you're going to hope that the thing works so let's uh, <clears throat> over here all right and then we'll put this back where you'll be able to see the floor okay and we will program up this smart car see what happens okay so let's see if we can download this and we got the orange little oh no we got oh it doesn't know what right value is I thought I passed it right value oh on turn left I did not pass it okay so I need to say an int right value I didn't pass it and that's why I didn't notice it why do I have int as degrees and int as float let's make that an int just for good measure all right so let's right mouse click I think it's happy this time. Boom. What it's going to do, uh, you know what we forgot to do? We're still in calibrate mode up here, and we don't want to be in calibrate mode. So up here, what we want to do is we're going to set the car speed. That's good. But instead of a calibrate, and we don't want to do a forward, uh, and we don't want to do a backwards, what we are going to do is a right turn or I think we say turn right turn right and then how far do we want to turn we want to turn let's say 180 degrees and then remember I need to pass it the right value if I remember right now let's just look at turn right and make sure that that looks like a good match yeah turn right wants degrees and it wants right value and that's what we're passing it so let's hold our breath let's hold our breath yes okay now let's bring this thing down here now we told it to turn 180 degrees okay and so I'm going to line it up perfectly as perfectly as I can with those lines on the on the floor and then I am going to turn it on whoa and it didn't do anything at all it did not do anything at all wonder what wonder what kind of error we have in here let's go back and let's look at our right turn first of all let's look and see what we sent it we said to do a turn right 180 plus we passed it WV that should be good we come down to turn right we stop the car we delay a hundred milliseconds we enable a we enable B uh, let's see oh man did you guys see that I hope you were screaming at me degree my mi minus six right or degree plus six degree plus six I hope you guys were screaming at me and we better fix it down here too oh that was terrible I'm so embarrassed that was a rookie mistake 
Rookie mistake. All right. Let's try again. We'll come up here. We will download it. That looks happy. Okay, so now let's see how we're going to do. I am going to line it up as perfectly as I can, and we are hoping, we are hoping to see 180 degree rotation. Turn it on. Boom! Did you see that? We absolutely nailed it. We absolutely nailed, nailed it. Why? Because math is your friend because linear regression works. Okay, let's do a 90, and let's see how we do there, because we want to sort of be able to kind of do a right turn and a left turn, and so let's do a 90. 90, like that. Bring our smart car back up here. Plug it in. Okay. And now I'll send that down there. Okay, so now let's see if we can do a 90. We'll line it up as carefully as possible. Turn it on. Oh man, Shazam! We got that. That is just exactly at 90 degrees. That was really, really good. Let's just try to do a full 360 and see how that looks. Okay. So, uh, let's do that. Okay, so we're going to come, we're going to point forward as carefully as we can. We are going to hit reset. Boom! Guys, that is probably within about four degrees of being perfect. It is absolutely looking good. So what I want you to see is the really neat thing about this is what I, what I hope the learning that you get from this is, is that uh, if we had just gone in and calibrated it at one value, if you calibrated it at 360, you would get a good result at 360. If you calibrate it at 90, you would probably get a good result at 90. But how about if you just got one bad measurement, then it would never work. So thinking like an engineer, how do we think like an engineer? You never make one measurement. Now, what would maybe be okay would be if you say, I'm only going to ever turn 90, so I would just sit and make 10 measurements at 90 and then average those and use that. That's starting to think like an engineer. But an even better way to think like an engineer is to think in terms of linear regression, that what I'm going to do, my thing just kind of developed a mind of its own there. Okay. Oh, I think this cursor hit my pad and that did it. Okay, so thinking like an engineer though, you, you think I don't want to set a rate for one data point. I want to get that rate over a range of data and therefore no matter where I am, I'm going to have a pretty good value. I might not have a perfect value anywhere, but I'm going to have a pretty good value. Okay, I cannot resist myself. I just always do this. Let's go ahead and see if we can test the whole thing out now. Let's make sure that we haven't broken anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my speed. Okay, so I set my speed, and then I want to go forward for, I wanna go forward for five feet, okay? And then I want to turn right by 180 degrees. And then I want to go four or I want to go, yeah, I would still be going forward, right? Because the car turns around, so forward is back towards me. I want to go forward for another five feet like that, okay? So we're going to go out there and we're going to go forward five feet. We're going to turn around and come back. And we're going to see if we can independently control distance. We can independently control speed. And let's see, yeah, I, let's put a speed, let's go kind of slow, let's go 1.2 on the speed. So I'm going to control speed, distance, and I'm going to turn without any one of those functions breaking the other function. 
Okay, let's see if it's going to take this code this time. Nope, we're ha oh, is that an error? Uh, okay, on forward it wants another argument. Oh, distance and velocity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, we got to pass it the velocity because how will it know what to do if it doesn't know how fast it is? Okay, and then the same thing up here, comma v. All right. So we pass it the distance we want to go and the velocity we want to go at. Let's try that. All right, it was happy. So we will be switching over to RoboCam. RoboCam. And we want to go five feet, right? So let's see what happens. We set it up. The pressure is on, guys. The pressure is on. And we are going to turn it on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, guys, that really looked like it went too far. Why did that go too far? Let me try that again. Okay, one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it went a little too far, and I did not get such a good, I did not get such a good turn on the end. All right, and so one of the things, I would say it probably went about five and a half feet. So let's see, a half a foot, six inches, that's a little bit more than 10%, so that wasn't perfect. But one of the things that I notice is, is that when it, uh, when it went, and then when it turned around, the tire slipped a little bit, so it didn't get the full 180. And so what you're starting to see is you're starting to see some of the limitations that you're gonna get, you're, you're starting to see some limitations you, you're going to get when you have kind of like an open loop system. We're calibrating this as carefully as we can, but if a tire slips, there's no way for it to know it, so it came back. I would say coming back because of that tire slippage, it was about a 20 degree error. The first time, it just absolutely nailed it. Well, the second time, the motor stayed on for the same amount of time, but the, the tire slipped a little bit. I'm going to just take a quick look out in the hall. There's carpet in the hall, and I'm going to see if it does any better. So let me just try that real quick and see if there's a difference. Yeah, I had uh, I had better luck on the carpet. I had better luck on the carpet than in here because it looked like the tires did not uh, did not slip. But I would say probably what you would want to do if you're going to run it on carpet, you would want to calibrate it on carpet. Okay, if you're going to run it on carpet, you would want to calibrate it on carpet. But I calibrated it in here, and if I've got traction, it seems to be working pretty well. So. What is the takeaway from this lesson? The takeaway from the lesson is if you do the math, things are going to work a lot better. Okay, if you do the math, the things are going to work a lot better. And what we've learned today is linear regression, that an engineer never just takes one me measurement uh, and uses that. An engineer never just randomly tries different times until he gets the 90 degree angle that he wants. He uses an equation. So number one, use an equation. Number two, at least make a bunch of measurements in average. But the best thing that you can do is linear regression, and then you have a calibration that will work over different values. You guys, leave me a comment down below. Your homework for next week is to just build some packs, build some, uh, you know, kind of like stacks of commands, and send this robot off on mission. Send him, see if you can make him draw a square, right? Have him go. You know, five feet, turn right, five feet, turn right, five feet. Have him go around and just see how well 
you're able to control him after we have been uh, after we have done this calibration. Okay, at this point we have like really good core capabilities. We can calibrate it. We can control the speed. We can control the distance that it goes. So we can control speed, distance, and turn. And we did it all with math, and that is the really good thing. I hope you guys are having as much fun with this as I'm having making these videos. And probably as we move forward, we're getting close to the point of now wanting to be able to send commands to this because we've got our command deck put together, right? We can go forward. We can go backwards, we can turn left, we can turn right, and we can do that with different parameters. And probably one of the next things we're going to want to do is start being able to control it, uh, you know, like where we don't have to program it everything, but like control it with the remote, and that will be pretty, uh, pretty cool. You guys might go back and check my earlier Arduino tutorial. We learned how to use the IR remote in uh, in that earlier Arduino tutorial series. We're going to apply that here to this robot. Okay, guys, Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.